In your headlines, MOU to be signed between government and Haitian consulate. And Good Neighbors Purse holds fourth annual Thanksgiving lunch giveaway. Hello Turks and Caicos, welcome to Newswatch. I'm Latoya walking your anchor for Monday's newscast. Let's get right into it. The government is in the process of signing a memorandum of understanding between the Haitian consulate here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. The announcement was made during a recent update from the Minister of Immigration. Here's details and Monday's leading story. Recently, my ministry has met with incoming Haitian consulate representative and will very shortly be signing an MOU between the consulate and the ministry for sharing of information and assistance as it relates to the Haitian illegal migration. This would include engagement and assistance from the Haitian government and the implementation of redress communication strategy geared towards deterring illegal migration and the Ministry of Border Services, Texas and Cape Island government zero toler tolerance approach. The Minister of Immigration also noted that the moratorium, which was approved by Cabinet on July 21st this year and took effect on Friday, July 23rd, on visas for Haitian nationals will be further suspended pending a review. The moratorium on visa for Haitian nation nationals visiting the TCI has been extended until the 31st of January 2022. During this period, we will be continuous, continuously reviewing an assessment and we, and we will have an agreed decision on the way forward before the extension period expires. This initiative is being taken as a result of a number of fraudulent documents used to enter the Turks and Caicos Islands. We have an obligation to protect TCI residents and visitors alike by ensuring that persons entering the Turks and Caicos Islands complies with the stipulations entry. Honorable Musgrove also explained that several trainings were conducted to enhance the skill set of workers within his ministry. Immigration training continue, conducted and co included asylum seeking training, vessel searching, rummaging training, human trafficking, search and rescue, and report writing. My ministry is also in the process of implementing the merger of customs and immigration department into one border force unit. The opposition says they have many concerns about the government's new beach vending policy, as it does not go very far and offers little protection. More in this next report. The much-anticipated beach and coastal vending bill that stirred up a lot of controversy in the past weeks was laid on the table of the House of Assembly today. But rather than the debate everyone was led to believe would have ensued today, the bill was only taken through its first reading. This means that the debate on the contents of the controversial bill will have to wait until it is read in the House a second time. In the meantime, the People's Democratic Movement opposition has made it clear that they will not sit idly by and allow the bill to go unchallenged. Over the weekend, the leader of the opposition, the Honorable Edwin Aswood, stated that the party has many concerns. He says it is the party's position that while there should be an enforceable system of regulations for beach vending activities, the drafted clauses in the Beach and Coastal Vending Bill do not represent the best interest of islanders and provides little to no protection for them. They say the bill will further alienate islanders from the freedom of using and enjoying the country's beautiful beaches, which has helped many to provide for their families and have turned many into budding and successful entrepreneurs. The party leader says the PDM is committed to supporting any law or policy that is of good for the people, and it is their position to strongly oppose any law and or policies that will be of detriment to the TCI and its people. The party says they will remain resolute and committed as the official opposition and as a party to ensure that the rights of all islanders are protected and not infringed upon. The Beach and Coastal Vending Bill is seeking to provide regulations for beach vending activities on the beaches and coastal areas of the Turks and Caicos Islands. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Isles. We'll take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more News Watch.
this is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. Several topics emerging from the latest sitting of the House of Assembly, such as price inflation. The highlights in this next story. A part of the concerns brought to the forefront during this latest House of Assembly sitting was price inflation, which isn't limited to the TCI, but has become a worldwide issue, more so within the last 12 months. Appointed member Honorable Jamaica Williams spoke on the issue. The cost of goods in the TCI for many years have been very high. And it has skyrocketed since the deadly coronavirus pandemic began. Last week on social media, <laughs> it was funny that the topic was about turkeys. And uh, this week here, we are talking about, uh, we are celebrating Thanksgiving. But um, the topic was, the topic of discussion on social media was about turkey and how expensive it was. And, um, how so many people may not be able to afford turkey. Well, I don't the cost of a single turkey in freezers at Graceway IGA last week was $20 short of $200. And depending on the size, may have only been able to provide one meal per person for a four-member family. Still, it is very high for our people, especially for our small local businesses here in Turks and Caicos. Now, Mr. Speaker, I know that we have made a promise and it is listed in our citizens' contract that we will do what we can to address the issues of price control. And while I know that that is high on the agenda for our government, I'm just encouraging us to look at means um, of short-term solutions. She makes reference to the saying, robbing Peter to pay Paul, which means to discharge one debt only to incur another. Currently, Mr. Speaker, uh, people right now are in survival mode, and this is something that we need to look into almost immediately. We are robbing Peter to pay Paul. I mean, I robbed Peter so many times, he's just standing there. <laughs> so um, I just feel like I just needed to make some contribution in that regard. Meanwhile, Director of Trade Lysandra Colley says that price control measures are not suitable at this time. We explore her reasoning in a subsequent newscast. As part of the holiday initiative, Good Neighbors Purse held their fourth annual Thanksgiving lunch giveaway. The highlights in this next story. Success for a fourth year in a row as the Good Neighbors Purse brought hundreds together over the weekend to provide hot Thanksgiving lunches and other items as part of a mission, they say, to give God thanks and bless the people of the TCI. So that is what inspired today. Amen. That we made it, we are alive and want to celebrate. We want everybody to come. I'm in the field, I'm in the community. A lot of people are hungry, a lot of people don't have food. They don't even have any hope of eating turkey this um, Thanksgiving. And so we decided that we shall go out there, ask for donation. And so some of our donors gave us ham, turkey, ham, you know, food. Many people cooked food today. You know, many people baked the turkeys, many people contributed. And so I want to say that I'm happy that this project is a success today. Dr. Apostle Kenneth Chukwu, president of Good Neighbors Purse TCI, says the last two weeks have been pretty hectic. However, prayers garnered the manpower and support needed. After prayers, God intervened. A couple baked 12 turkeys for me and six hams. You know, so, and then to get all this together was not easy. It was just the grace of God. So I want to give him praise and thanksgiving. For making it possible today. This is the fourth year in a row that the organization has put on the event and says it becomes more rewarding each year. This year they were able to add toys, clothing and household items to their list of giveaways and are happy about the expansion. It's all about a labor of love. 
you know, letting people know primarily about the, the goodness of God, yeah. the love of God, what God has done for us by offering up His Son to die on the cross of Calvary. You love God, you love your fellow man, and this is the result of showing that you love yeah. your fellow man. And four years has now been going on, and we see the success, we see the need that is there, and the good neighbors person under the leadership of um, Pastor Apostle Dr. Chuku here is doing their part. The Apostle says all meals were gone at the end of the distribution as he thanked the businesses and families involved in planning, cooking, setting up and providing for the event. A quick break, more news watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providenciales, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. weather forecast for November 23rd, 2021. Starting with the nation's capital, Grand Turk, on Tuesday we have intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 83, low 77, winds west at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Then South Cake is on Tuesday, partly cloudy skies, high 83, low 76, winds west at 10 to 20 miles per hour. North and Middle Cake is on Tuesday, partly cloudy skies, high 83, low 76, Winds west at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Fort Parrot and Pine Key on Tuesday, partly cloudy skies. High 83, low 76. Winds west at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And on Providencialis on Tuesday, partly cloudy skies. High 83, low 76. Winds west at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For your sunrise and sunset, we have the sun rising at 6.07 a.m. and setting at 5.06 p.m. For your high tide and low tide, for your high tide 9.49 a.m., 10.15 p.m. and low tide 3.24 a.m., 4.19 p.m. And for your hurricane outlook, for the North Atlantic, Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, Tropical cyclone formation is not expected during the next five days. And that's it for your weather forecast and hurricane outlook. We'll be right back for more News Watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV! We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Three outstanding initiatives, one event, as Jax will see him launch his first book, short film, and song over the weekend. Take a look. This Friday, I, on November 19th, I launch a three-in-one event. Um, I launched the book, of course, which is this, Rise Up and Take Your Position. 
I also um, launched a song which was, you know, sung by Barbara Johnson. She and I co-wrote the song. Um, it's called Rise Up and Take Your Position. And we also, I also did a movie, a short film actually, about 15 minutes. It is called Rise Up and Take, Nobody's Better Than You. Rise Up, Nobody's Better Than You. And that was produced by Mr. Benson Williams. He has a production company and he produced a movie for me, but it's based on my, on my story. Seymour explains that his motivational book was written based on his personal struggles and experiences. So the book is a motivational book. Basically, um, it's 12 chapters. It's basically to encourage individuals to rise up and take their position. I think too many of us are just waiting for the right time, waiting for the perfect time, or we're afraid to, to launch out, or we're afraid to just pursue what we were really called to do. And this book is to encourage you to, to rise up, no matter the color of your skin, no matter your background, no matter your financial condition, um, no matter your past. And it's basically saying that whatever you have, your gift is inside of you. The author goes on to saying that colorism was the biggest challenge he faced when writing his book. You know, growing up, you know, thinking that you're nobody, thinking that you're insignificant, um, thinking that, you know, because you're very dark, you know, there are so many myths about it. And so it brought back a lot of memories. So that, that was a challenge in, in putting the book together. It brought back memories, even though sometimes you feel like you're over it. But when you start talking about it, you question yourself, am I really over this thing? And, and so that was the biggest challenge for me. Seymour further informs us as to where his book can be found. The books can be purchased on Amazon, or you could um, go to Panacos Bookstore. Um, they will have copies of the books. I still have a few left. You could, always, you could also contact me directly. He ends with encouraging the masses to document their stories as he did. I would like to use this opportunity to encourage you to let you know that there is a position for you in this world. I know sometimes you feel that you're not important. You feel that other people are important, but you are important. Nobody is better than you. That's what the song says. You listen to the song, it says, you are important. Nobody is better than you. And that is what I want everybody to have in their minds. This wraps up today's edition of Newswatch. Remember, you can visit our website at www.ptvatci.com or join us every weekday at 6.30 p.m. I'm Latoya Walken. Until next time.